All right, thank you all for being here. Um, I want to recognize the crowd, first of all. Uh, I thought they played a huge factor in the game. Uh, uh, definitely the most intense, uh, most um, uh, biggest crowd we've had at a man trip in five years. I um, thought they were into it from the start. The uh, They made a difference. Uh, you know, I think Pitt had nine penalties in the game, several procedure penalties. Um, I think noise had a factor in that. I think our guys fed off of it, uh, fed off the energy. You know, we had some bad things happen to, happen to us in that football game. You know, you lose your, your starting quarterback, who's really not only your starting quarterback, but he's really kind of the – the, the heart and soul of the football team. He's, he's the, the high energy guy. He's the, the leader. He's got, um, you know, he's a guy that's easy to follow. And he goes down on the second drive. Um, and playing at home in that type of atmosphere, I really thought, especially our defensive players, fed off that. Um, and so I want to I want to credit the the crowd. And um, we play we play a game next week too, and so uh, we'd love them for all come back and make it really hard on on those guys from West Texas. Um, but a huge win, huge win. I thought it was a team win. Um, they call it the brawl for a reason, you know. And that wasn't a thing of beauty. There, that wasn't like a classic. Uh, they're not going to talk about the the beauty of that game for for a long time. But regardless of what it what it was, it was a win for West Virginia. And um, I have a lot of respect for for Coach Narduzzi and that and that that team. They've won a bunch of games the last two years. Um, you know, it, it's been something that stuck with us for 54 weeks, and um, we had a chance. We had a lead in the fourth quarter 54 weeks ago, and we just we did not finish. And I think the evolution of our program and I think a lot of it has to do with our off season. A lot of it has to do with the leadership we have. Um, the fact that that our best players are on both both fronts, I think that has really helped us. And and we're a tough football team. We're a mentally tough football team. We're a physically tough football team. And I thought that showed. And it was ugly. And we can play ugly ball. And and um, but I'm proud of our guys. Really proud. Proud of our staff. You know, it. I, I said this to our team, and I, and I made a point of this. It had been since November 25th of 2011 since the state of West Virginia and our fan base had experienced a win and been able to celebrate a win over Pittsburgh on the gridiron. And, and, and our state needed this. Our university needed this. Our football program needed this. Um, and so this is a huge win on a bunch of different levels, and, and that's not lost on us. Um, and it's also – these are the type of wins – like, I'm so happy for our staff um, – and, and not just the staff, but also the families of the staff. You know, there's, there's, neg there's been negativity, and, and, like, I can tune it out. I live in a bubble, honestly. I mean, I go two places, uh, counting three if, I, if, uh, if Dax has, a, has a, uh, a flag football game. And so I'm in this building. I'm in my house, and I do a radio show. And that's basically what – I'm in a bubble. And, but our, our staff and, and their families have to deal with that. And, and so I'm excited for them. So they shouldn't have to deal with that for a week, you know? Um, and, and that's a group that puts a lot of time and effort into it. And so, so I'm really happy for them. They can experience this. Uh, that's one of the best traditions in all of college football is singing country roads after a win. And, and that feeling in that locker room, if you can bottle it up and sell it, they, they it'd be the top seller wherever you went, because that's a great feeling when you, when you put a lot into it and you're able to get the payoff. And so pleased with them. I thought, um, offensively, just, you know, it wasn't pretty, um, but we were able to ground it out. You know, we ran for it was 51 for 151. You know, we had some lost yardage in there when we tried to throw it. Um, you know, it's tough. Backup quarterbacks get about 20, 25 percent of the reps. And so um, first time in a long time, like I just I had our call sheet and I just I don't know if you saw it. I was carrying a notebook and I, I just made a bunch of notes. Uh, plays that I felt like that that Nico felt comfortable with and what he could do, and and it was about half a half of a, a sheet of paper and um, and he went out and credit to him. That's a tough place, and I think it speaks to him when you think about this. He's had two wins where he played the majority of the, or you know a lot of snaps uh, on the road at Oklahoma State, which they hadn't lost in a long time at home. I know, I know people don't want to talk about that game, but we did beat them at home at the end of last year and broke like a long winning streak for them at home, okay? And he played quarterback the whole second half. And then tonight, in a really tough spot, you know, and biggest rival we have, national television, and he gets thrust in there in the third series. And 
a lot of times people don't win football games. You know, a lot of times what happens is people lose them. And what he didn't do, he had a fumble, but he came back, and he didn't lose the game. And I think that you can't lose – like, you don't – you can't you, – that, that's something that should, should not be lost. Um, and I know you guys that really understand the game um, understand that. And then de- defensively, you know, we've been um, – you know, probably fairly criticized over the last, you know, year and a half that we haven't played, you know, especially in the secondary, we haven't played as well. Well, those guys go out tonight and they get three interceptions. Um, Pitt struggled the, in, the entire game. Run uh, they, After the first drive, they ran the ball and, and, and had some success running, but they didn't really uh, do much after that. And so I'm happy for those guys. Um, in the secondary, I'm happy for, for Dante Wright, Shadon Brown, Jordan Leslie, those guys. They had a good plan, and the players went out and executed. And so, um, overall, huge win. And with that, I'll take questions. So, expound on the defense there. Did, did you go uh-oh after that first drive? And then how did it turn after that? I mean, what was the difference yeah. from there? No, not necessarily uh-oh because we were able to hold them to a field goal, which I thought was really – um, if you want to go back and really think about some big drives of the game, I think that was big as big as any of them. I thought the two drives defensively that were huge. We get the we get them to stop in the red zone and they kick a field goal. And right after Nico's fumble, um, we get a pick, and it, that's a, that was a huge momentum swing because we we score the next play. And so, you know, we came back. We we just misfit it. You know, they ran, they basically ran power. Um, all the way down the field. I, mean, I don't even know if they threw – whether they threw one pass that whole drive. I don't even know if they threw it. Um, and, and the disappointing thing was they didn't catch us off guard. We kind of we kind of expected them to come and try to try to run the football, and they did. They had some success. But after that, I mean, they ran the ball 36 times for 130 yards. You know, we, you know, we really played the run well after that. Trey Lathan with some really timely tackles tonight. Mm-hmm. What did you see in his performance? Well, he's gotten better. You know, he's gotten better. You know, you think about a kid that had to make his first career start at Penn State, and um, and he's gotten better the whole time. He's really athletic. He's exactly what we're looking for in a, in a linebacker. And he's athletic enough playing coverage. He plays in our in our speed and our third down packages and does a nice job. Should have had a pick tonight. You know, he's probably the one time we got a hand on the ball that we didn't intercept it. Um, but he's getting, he's getting better. And he's a guy that's got a bright future. He really does. Um, I think it's a great story, you know. C.J. Donaldson and him from the same high school and uh, really good friends, and I thought both of them performed well tonight. Do you have an update on, on Garrett at all right now? No, I, you know, obviously y'all saw him in a boot. Um, he tried to go back. He couldn't He couldn't really put a lot of uh, a lot of weight on it. So it wasn't uh, – he would have liked to have gone back. I don't, I don't think he could have performed. And so we just made the decision that – that it wasn't, you know. I'll have an update when we meet on Monday, but I don't, I don't right now. Yeah, I think he's going to be fine. I think it kind of scared him. He's got the, he's got the, he's where he's recovering from the TCU injury. I think it scared him more than anything. But um, now after that penalty, I mean, like, like, like he'll we'll deal with that on Monday, like. Yeah, he was violent. Yeah, I thought he – yeah, he was violent. You know, I've, I've said this, like, we really went back and, like, who do we who do we have to be to be successful? And we talked about really four things. We need to be a disciplined team, which that penalty from CJ wasn't. But, you know, we had three penalties in the game, you know, and two of them were kind of silliness. And we really played clean football after that. Um, but we have to be disciplined. We have to be a team that strains. I thought we, we played extremely hard. We got to be a team that's tough mentally and physically, and then the last thing is we got to be smart, and um, and we've really worked the toughness. Y'all, I've sat in this in this chair and, and told you all this was the most physical uh, spring practice we've had. This is the most physical fall camp we had, and I knew that's who we had to be to to be successful. And you saw that. You know, I think that the Wyatt Milams and Thomas Remack and Brandon Yates and Zach Frazier. Um, and Doug Nestor, those guys really took it personal. And once Gary got hurt, they knew the game was going to be on them. And I think C.J. felt the same way. Um, and he ran the ball as well uh, in that first drive after the break as I've seen him run it. Did you say anything to Nico after the fumble? Or the no, it, it, here's the thing. It was um, – I thought it was, he had really had two moments there where, you know, 
he, he forgot to motion a guy um, on a play like in that drive where we had to punt. They the, We got a good defensive stop and where we didn't send out the right personnel grouping, which is ridiculous. But um, we didn't send out the right personnel grouping. We took a timeout, and then he forgot the motion on the next play. So we really had two bad little plays there back-to-back. Um, and then the fumble, and he just didn't. He took his eyes off the snap. You know, he took his eyes off the snap, and uh, it's a little thing, but those those are the type of things that cost you. Because I felt like we were really going in. That was second. I think it was second and medium. And that was – we were doing a couple of things in the run game. They were having a hard time stopping. And so um, – but, yeah, those were those were his two kind of mistakes. Last week after Duquesne, you, you sounded pretty pleased with Nico's reps uh, when he came in in the second half. How did you feel tonight just about uh, – his nerves, playing with calmness, playing with confidence as the game went on? Yeah, you know, he he managed the game well. We didn't ask him to do a ton. I thought he had a huge play. We had a third and, I don't know, five or six, and he pulled the ball on his own read and got a physical run, and that was huge because that ate up about another three minutes of clock um, and, and put us in position. I thought he made a couple of nice RPO throws, you know, um, hit a glance on a third down, hit an outcut to Preston that was a nice play. Um, you know, for not getting a whole bunch of reps during the week, I thought he managed and, and handled it pretty well. Um, if he's the guy, you know, next Saturday, if that's the way it plays out, then he'll obviously have a whole week's of practice and the expectation that he'll play much improved, and I, and I believe he will. In a situation like tonight, how, how does your role as a play caller change when you go into the game with a certain plan and then it is condensed so much? Well – um, and they played us a little bit different, too. They played a lot of 4-3, which that's not necessarily who they are. They did some different things with their ends. Um, and so, really, once you get a feel for what kind of game it was going to be, and, you know, toward the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter, it became pretty evident what kind of game it was going to be. And so, you got to be able to adjust. And so, that's what I was saying. You know, that's when kind of the, the call sheet that we had, you know, kind of put that away and, and had some notes that I took at halftime. And then I kind of maintained those notes on some things I saw, how they were playing us. I thought Chad and Matt did a really good job in the run game as well. Um, and then Sean Reagan up top helped us with some – get us some throws when we needed them. Um, but, yeah, we had to we had to completely pivot. And and I thought we did a good enough job to, to, to go. And we didn't screw it up, and we scored enough to win. Talk about promotions and demotions within the secondary throughout the week. Mm-hmm. What did you see from them? And what has Ruffin done to kind of solidify? You know, I think Malachi Ruffin's a great. I made a I made a statement that nobody in our locker room had beaten uh, Texas Tech, and he came up to me and said, "Oh, I did my freshman year." And I, I said, "Well, I, I forgot your ass was that old." Um, and uh, and so you know, I think it's a great story, a great story. Walk on, it's came and and earned a scholarship a few years ago, and then he's worked himself in. He started the game tonight, which he earned. Um, and he had a huge pick. That pick at the end of the game, that was a, that was a great play. You know, the ball bounced off, and he made a great play. And I thought he competed. Um, but yeah, but I can't say enough good things about him, what kind of guy he is and, and how he kind of was patient. And, and there's not a whole lot of patience in the world today, right, and, and especially in our game. And I thought he was patient, kind of bided his time, and he's made the most of it. Now that the game's over, it was a similar kind of – Results a bit for Pitt's offense from last week in Cincinnati. Did you see something in that game that made you think Phil in particular is vulnerable and you can get some picks here? Or? No, you know, I think that, yeah, so Cincinnati's defense and ours are very similar. You know, how – I mean, they're they're very, very similar. Um, so, and, and Pitt knew that as well, right? How we – our fronts are, are similar. You know, the games we run up front are similar. The simulated pressures we run are similar. They're a little bit different coverage wise because they can play they play a little bit more man. Um, we wanted to we wanted to make it tough on the quarterback, you know, and, and I thought we got pressure. You know, people are gonna point and blame at him, but it's hard to throw the ball when you got people in your face. You know, and, and that's the easy that's the easy choice a lot of times for fans and, and critics is what's well, gotta be the quarterback. Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in front of that quarterback. And so we were able to get pressure, and we gave them some different coverage looks, some things I told you we were working on that we didn't necessarily show at Duquesne, because we got, we had, we did some things in the Penn State game that that Jordan, myself, Shadon, Dante, we knew that we had to get better at, or we were going to get picked on in certain areas, and so we made some swift swift changes that we could Duquesne and. And wanted to get through that week and not put it on video, and I think that helped us. You know, we gave up a couple big pass plays against Duquesne, which everybody's panicked over, but um, I think it really helped us in the long run because we were able to show those today, and I think we were able to confuse them a little bit. 
and uh, execution uh, errors on the first drive, but to turn it around that quickly and so completely to go from marching mm -hmm. down the field to not giving up anything close well, I to thought, like that. I thought what happened, too, is we were, we were really energized early in the game. And so sometimes our linebackers, we were, we were flowing too fast. And they were hitting some gap runs, and we were shooting. They and they that listen, Coach Singetti did a good job. That was a, a really good opening drive by him. Um, but once we settled down and played really good gap integrity, then we felt like that we. And I've said this like, we've got a good football team up front. We do. We roll a bunch of different D linemen in, um, and those guys are really progressing. And so those are favorable matchups for us. And so. I didn't think I thought it would be difficult sledding for them to run it. They did a better job early in the game than I really thought they would. Um, but credit to our guys because they settled down, were more disciplined with their eyes, and and we were able to get the ball down better. You had a question, sorry. Yeah. Uh, how how big is it for your defense in the fourth quarter? They went turnover on down, turnover on down, punt, interception. For them to close out the game, and not have your offense have to close out the game. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a sign of a good football team. You know, I think it's a sign of a good football team, and. Um, We've had confidence in that group. You know, I don't think they've played as, as well as they could, you know, up until this game. But it was huge. Like, this was a, this was a game that was going to be ran – was going to be won running the football and, and being able to stop the run and who could create takeaways. And we were able to create takeaways and we ran the ball just a little bit better than them and we took advantage of, of the takeaways um, more than they did. Okay. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you all.